Scano is for Guego. A Honda was near Yasso. They get near that way. Never get shout down. They had near on the walk garden to go for a joke down. If we say, they near your gang down. They near a yet near coin down. One day, Nishra day, send a yard away. a ye hound down, send a guard good reverse this down. And God Gwenny, a K Wanak. Send you, Nane, hard day yon, some gua we. Nene, Hawaiian and down. Send young Gwe Ho Dan, Nane, on go hungry. To go to hand eh. Send you yet, now on Kisu Sut go work camp. Nene, send Hadi Sars down. Gwe go send you, send you, send a governor note down. Nekoto, send you on Gwe Ho Dan. Ne had nets and a guy note down, ne hood cart went Hawaiian and down. Ne get nets and home we get your gang down. Ne ne a handy, ne hear your hair, and go guinea or yarn ray. Ne ne go scow on your gate, a dot cart. Ne ne send ye yut. Now we forget, now can ye queer a wog yard to honk. Ne had nets, send ye yut, now ne ward down. I went how down, how got restrained. Such scan, I don't know, Daniel. At home, once again, they go double on ye. Da nene is at you when dog way go, I saw, got do again, what drops we owe, such scan, not one of Daniel. Da nigi nigi, you get them. E we, nene, a yachin nee quaint then. Scan no gates on the squawn no da home. Gang walk, gang walk home way, now I agree one equa. Nigi say, Tony Yawe, and Guadi. Nene, I want to don't go, don't send you to Tonda Gate, sent a deep way out duck, on Kisu Sut go work hand, ne had ne, send me on, ne, ne, I'm got to send duck, ne, I had the way home, swan, ne, nishradi. Da scan, no gates on, as one you go high hand, turn horn, and you a wag, to get on, nan, a god queenie, send you a god for day yand, send me on, nan, ne, go to hand, ne, send you a god horn day, send chicky, sa. Nene got the way a stone hungry. Thou niggy can not only yoke your gat. Nay, nay, nats and the governor, then, now go home with car. Nay, had nay, they got one ahead. Send ye yot, nay, on kiss your suit can. Niggy nay, get gone, get gusky on your gay hunt car. Nay, nay, get your gat. Can't go home with a sour knees up. Nay, nay, send ye yot, now go and eat get on. Niggy nay, a hany. Ne go on with car, sadas ta. Ne on ha, nan is a no stick. How hot turn to your yans and go away, son go ya this song. And go away, niggy, gang what? Go gaunt. Ne ne, yet in the quaint dan, what dan, and a governor dan. Dan what? To get on, go gaunt, go scan your and sat got a yet see hobby. Hot day go gaunt, hannies, hot go here, sat the boy and stone hung gate. Nay, ten ten a governor dan. Nay, some gua weeds on go hungry. Da the god one a hand git to hone your wages for jagongi, so they were yester hungry. Nay, nay, hand is as for they saw stone. Nay, hand it, swan of stick. Send the yet some gua weeds on go ya dis song. Nay, nay, on gua wan, na, go home with ya. Da so jagongi to hone your wage. Da to gain your tongue now, hung on the go hunt. I started with uh, explaining, uh, introduce myself. I said my name was Hahondaguas. My English name was uh, Ron Thomas, and I'm from the Bear Clan, and I'm from the Seneca Nation. Uh, I started out by saying some of the topics we wanted to talk about today was uh, what it is to have a good mind, and what what it entails when we say to have a good mind. And I explained how these are words I ask for compassion and understanding. That if it if it happens that way, that my words fall short, or my words are heard from a different direction that you never heard before, or especially when it comes from the way that you heard it before from those that walked before us, or those that are uh, are even at the at near the end of their journey. And we look to them as our, our, our teachers, our elders. If, if words fall short or it's in a different manner, we ask for compassion that you remember that 
we're doing the best that we can and these are some of the words that I heard while I was growing up. Secondly, I explained that um, as I talk about some of these subjects, um, I ask that um, you keep in mind that when I was learning, I, here's what I said in the language, is I put my words on top of their words. And that's what that's referring to as those that pass before us. That they said the first tongue that you should talk in is always your own tongue. You should use your language, be proud of it, be stingy of it, hold it strong. I saw they saw a stone. And they said that that's the first one that you should give your words whether if it's words of encouragement or whether you're speaking on behalf of somebody you use your your own tongue first that that's the tongue that our creator give to us and where that's the one that we want to encourage and make sure that we give a lot of uh encouragement gaskelnyo is what we say where we give encouragement to those that who can who never who couldn't understand what i was saying the English language takes so much away from it. I can translate roughly what was said, but it, it's a descriptive language that means so much more than what the English language can describe. So until you take those words in and you learn them and you... There's teachings that go behind all of it. That's why it, the, the tongue is so much more than just a language. So when I say I put my words on top of the elders that gave Gaskalnyo while I was growing up, they always said, encourage them to learn your language, to be stingy of it, to hold it strong. Our way of life, our language, and our songs, our culture, our heritage, you keep it strong. That's where the strength will come, you'll stay strong. So I put my words on top of them, on top of their words and I, I offer that as well and uh, I give encouragement to you to learn your your culture and your language and um, that's where we started now I said uh, I also mentioned and then after you get through that then you it, then you can use a tongue where if you need to use it for everyone to understand and so be it but that's that's new way of thinking. The old way of thinking was if you don't understand, you better learn because then you're not going to understand. You're not privileged to understand them. So that's why they would give Gaskalnyo. So they were yes. So, but today we want to talk about a good mind and what, what does that mean when you say, what is a good mind? And I think today in our given time and situation that we're in, it's... Uh, more important than ever to um, exercise so many of these teachings that were given to us as Ongwe people and it's the perfect opportunity to come back to that to be able to reconnect and to me uh, when we talk about a good mind there's a there's a strong presence in that itself is the mind when it's fully being a good mind it's when you're fully present you're not worrying about what's coming later that day what's coming tomorrow what's coming the next week what's coming the next year you're not worrying about what money and bills and everything else you got to pay and this scheduling and everything you're not worrying about everything that's happened in the past because a lot of that stuff has has different meaning for other people sometimes you know oftentimes the thing that we bring from the past isn't always all of the good things until you need to draw on those memories for strength and guidance but the things that are that people's mind are stuck on in the past are always the heavy and burden things grief or mistakes and everything else coming through so it's not it's not healthy for us it's not a part of Ganiquio when we're thinking ahead or we're thinking in the back. But to me, it's right here, right now. And it's being able to take the teachings that we have that have already proven that. That's not new information in our, in our culture. That's 
that's uh, that's very much an ancient, timeless past of our ancestors that our very opening address for Ganohanyuk is what it promotes. And Ganikwayit, that you're making your mind right. And Snikohagwego, you're making your thoughts full. And for that, definitely what the teachings that I thought of that we can relate to, especially in this time of this virus and the COVID and the pandemic and the isolation and having to live the way that we're living at times when we're such a social people and we draw strength from one another. This is not how our life was meant to be. So being able to connect with your higher power and it means a lot to be able to be present. There's a there's a massive difference between living mindfully by being present than living with your mind literally full with everything else that's going on in the world, whether it's the news, whether it's the new cases, whether it's the tragedies that are still going on behind everyday living. It's just it's it's just completely mind boggling if you let it be. So being coming back to to Ganiquio, definitely there's some teachings that are already in our in our language and our culture and our spirituality that that are in place that remind us. And without the you know talking when it gone in young ka, you know that that's 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 the the other tongue. Words like the mindfulness and present and that's that's not ours. Ours comes, it's already a part of our culture. And that's a part of our, our Ganohanyuk. The first thing we, we give when we come together is we give Ganohanyuk. We're giving thanks for one another. It's about being, having empathy, not just, not, not just sympathy for a person. It's thinking how I would feel if I was that person. And we're drawing strength from one another. And giving thanks for first that our minds are able to come together and that we're still alive today. There was no guarantee when we laid our head down on our pillows last night, each and every one of us, that we were going to see the light of a new day. That's a gift. So when we open our eyes, that's the first thing we say Nyawe for. That's what Ganiquio is, being present, being mindful. If you're mindful, then you can, you can have gratitude. So gratitude, definitely, from the time that you wake up, that's a gift. As opposed to waking up and thinking, oh my God, still a pandemic. Still can't do this, still can't do that. And a thousand other reasons. That if it's feeling like a burden, it shows where, where there's some room. Room for your compassion. And so there's a lot of different things in our, in our teachings that promote that and that's and to me when we do our opening address and they do Ganiquio and they do Ganohanyuk Ganiquio is all wrapped up in through that about teaching how to be present how to be mindful first thing is we give thanks for my neighbor I give thanks for me we're still alive from what I told what I've been what I'm being told there's no word in the community that someone has lost their breath there's no death there's no tragedy Maybe there's people that are suffering silently. Maybe there's sickness that's somewhere that we don't know. There's nothing we can do about that except give a prayer for them and pray that they'll be able to know, scan again, they'll be able to know what that health is moving forward, that their families will draw strength from one another. And maybe the day will come that we're lucky to the point that we'll be able to come together as one mind again and those people who aren't here will be here. That's number one when it comes to Ganohanyuk. And then from there, it's all creation and connecting with our creation that our Creator has given us. Starting from our Mother Earth and all that she has given us from the, from the very first step when we're, when we're young in this world to our very last step. We walk on her back. And this is the same place that our ancestors walked and the gifts that they've given us. And every year, 
without fail, we see her fulfill all of her duties. And from her back, she grows all that we use for our sustenance to keep us healthy and keep us well. And we, and from there, it branches out from our Mother Earth, and it goes from creation, right, in the order that it goes in height, to the tree, to the brushes, to all of the flowers, all of the different gifts that are given to us. They say, it's mind lifting. It's mind lifting. Maybe it, that's what creation is about. When uh, your maybe your mind is somewhere that's heavy, and you see that pretty flower come through in the springtime, it's there for lifting your mind, and you can have peace in knowing that that's creation that you see there. That's our Creator. That's His work in its fullest and finest form, and that's there for your mind. That's a moment that you're connecting with our higher power. Maybe it's that way when you open your eyes in the morning, they say in the language, Maybe it's that way, there's all different songs and all different birds that you hear that are singing. These were creations that were given to us from our Creator of the birds. And let it be known that when you hear those morning birds singing, that's your gift of reminding you You've still awoken carefully. You've still risen to another day. And you say, You say, Thank you. Because when you laid your head at night, you said, Thank you for the day. And you maybe prayed for a new day. So your prayer is answered. Your, your, your gift was given. So that's, how, that's, that's what a Ganiquio really promotes is not only being present and being mindful, but also having a strong sense of gratitude and appreciating all that we have every single day as opposed to all that we don't have. And that's Negi uh, And there's, um, there's a lot of teachings within our uh, culture that tell us that. Right from the time that uh, Handsome Lake, even in the quote of Handsome Lake, Gaihuiyo, um, that's exactly where where his where his mind was came come back to him when he regained his life after coming through the alcoholism. Uh, he laid he laid sick in bed, and it had been years since he had been able to carry on and be able to be healthy. And his he was so sick he couldn't t tend to himself, and his daughter was taking care of him. And he had already he had already regained some health, and he went back to alcohol, got sick again, regained some health, and stayed sick for a whole year. Regained some health, got back to alcohol, got sick again. A whole another year he got sick. That third year come around, and he thought it's time. Okay, he's going to get better now. This is about the time of the year he's going to feel better. This time, he didn't get better. Instead, he laid sick in bed. And he was so sick, he, all he could do was lay in bed, and he was looking through this a smoke hole, a uh, squawkite. And as he's staring out at the weather, he starts to think all these different thoughts. Things that he's never really thought before. So, he's starting to think things, he's starting to think of the fact that his illness, his very illness, the way his body is, there must be somebody somewhere with such great strength, such great power that's doing this to him. There must be somebody somewhere that's responsible for the way that I am, he thought. That's why this is the way it is. And that kind of continued on. And then he started to notice he had no choice but to start seeing things. Because he was sick in bed and just staring tunnel vision out this smoke hole in the longhouse. And he thought, Somebody somewhere made this beautiful day. I never noticed what a beautiful day it is, like well, how much sunshine there is. There must be somebody somewhere that has such great strength that makes the way the weather is. And then it come back again. Another day come back and he's, he could hear the birds singing. And he thought the same thing. He said, all of the different birds, all of the beautiful songs, there must be somebody somewhere that has such great strength and such great power 
that has created all of that I see and hear. And then same thing that happened, he started to wonder, think about his body and think about his life. And think about maybe maybe there's been some mistakes that he's made in his life that that's the reason why things are the way that they are. And then he thought, I wonder if if I'm going to see the light change. Maybe that will happen, I'll see the light change again. And he did. He seen that he seen a yoga. He see Gasneha. He seen that evening come. He's still looking through there, and he sees again all of the stars light up the sky. And he never seen such a nice night before, and the moon. And he thought the same thing. There has to be somebody somewhere with such great strength that has the power and ability to make these beautiful stars. There has to be. Then he started to wonder again. I wonder if I'll see the light of a new day. And he started to pray. He started to give thanks. And then he started to think about his life and the choices he made. And maybe he made some mistakes along the way. And he that's where he started to repent to our Creator for any wrongdoings that he had done. And the light of a new day come. And then that's what he made his ritual, was that he would give thanks every day. He would give Ganohanyak. He would pray to see the evening come, or he would pray to see the light of a new day. And then he would also ask for forgiveness from our higher power, from our Creator, for any wrongdoings that he had moving forward, that he had had in his past through his life. Kaihune Ashra is what they call it. It's like sinful, sinfulness. And that's that's a strong that's a strong teaching there because the, how the rest of that goes is that our uh don't our guardians that, that are brought to us by our creator, the four guardians, they come down to see Skanadayo handsome lake and they uh, they told him they told him, we see and we hear all that you do. And we're here to, we've been sent here by him. Referencing our higher power, our creator. And they said that they sent us here because he tells, he says that there's some, there's a man on this world and down here in this world that's always thinking of me. He's strong-minded every day. That's all he does. He's thinking of me, thinking of me, thinking of me. He's giving thanks. He's praying. He's asking for forgiveness. And that's when they asked him. They said, "We're here to listen to you. You tell us what you have to. You have tell us what you have to." And when he moved forward, he when he put his words forward to them, he uh, he re he repented for a few things, and they had just told him, "No, that that's not what." That's not what we're here for. That's not what we're here for. And then finally he come to what was most bothering him, his own mindfulness, and also was hurting our Creator, was the amount of his alcoholism that he had taken part in, and how it had consumed him in different sinful things that come from that. So he repented for his use in alcohol, and they told him, that's, that's what we're here, it's right what you made you made right and that's from that point on that's when the code of handsome lake started coming they started giving him all of the different segments of our teachings that we still have today so that's a strong that's a strong teaching point for each and every one of us that we can still use today whether if you're doing an opening address for a ceremony or whether you're speaking to a crowd but definitely the mindfulness portion of our teachings, it says it all right there already. This isn't new information. This was an ageless past from our ancestors, all of these teachings. And um, definitely that's where it comes back to is uh, that's, that's what a good mind is. And is what they say is that uh, from the good mind comes nice, kind, soft words what we speak to one another and that comes back to having that empathy for one another having that compassion for one another 
that care, that love, and that respect for one another. For caring for a part of our teachings, again, from the code tells us, tells the young to be stingy and to protect our elders. And it tells the elders to be stingy and to protect our children, for they're connected. One is leaving the world, one is new to the world. And they have much to teach one another. And he remind, it reminds us that how strong our Creator is very, very, very present in our children, for that they're fresh from heaven. They haven't, they're, 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 they don't carry sin, they're not heavy-blooded, they're not heavy-minded, they're, they're new. There's something that uh, you don't see too much anymore, but I can remember when I was young, you'd see some of the, old, the elders, they would call children sot, or they would call them haksot. So that means they're saying grandmother, grandfather. That's what the the old people would call little babies, and I used to wonder what what you know I I asked you know that need that we what, and they'd say that's because they are, they are our elders, they're fresh from our Creator, they still know what it's like to be pure, they still know what it's like where we come from. They were at the ceremonies with our Creator just a short time ago. We give them that respect, and you call them that. You don't hear that anymore. You don't hear that. That's that's a, that's an old-fashioned thing. But that's something I can remember hearing from the elders. So Ganikwio, definitely taking the time to be here and now, to allow yourself to be present, to be able to take that time to just sit and to let be and to be mindful. It's okay to bring with you not just the present, but bring with you the past, but bring the ageless past. The one that comes from our great ancestors that have such amazing resiliency and power and strength and guidance and know that they too aren't far away as far as protecting us each and every one of us have family that are on the other side. You get that little feeling, you get that little thought, you get that little reminder. That can be a part of your mindfulness as well. And giving thanks for those. And giving thanks to our Creator. Giving thanks for the creation. Keeping those teachings in mind about laying your head on the pillow at night, that there's no guarantees that your eyes will open again to the light of a new day. But when they do, make sure that you take that minute you take that moment to just say thank you. Say, say, say thank you, not only for yourself, but for your neighbor, for your family, for your creation, and for your health. Not only your physical health, but definitely in this time that we're, that we're living through right now, your mental health. And Gani Kuiyo is a good mind. A good mind isn't just a good mind. It's not just things that you do. I'm a good person. I try to do the best thing. It's how you feel, how you think, how you how you how you help, how you love, how you appreciate, how you pray. It's how you share. These teachings, they belong to every each and every one of us. It doesn't matter. Where they, you know, you go to this longhouse, or you go to that longhouse, or you don't go to longhouse, or it, it. We're all ongwa hongwe, and th these are the teachings that our Creator has given to us, and our ancestors fought and gave their life for, their very life, to keep these teachings in our language and our, our way of life alive. So. I, I put my words on top of their words when they give Gaskaunya, when they give words of encouragement, and they tell you to stay strong, to stay mindfully strong, to have a good mind, to use nice, kind, soft words, to hold our culture, our language, our songs, our medicines, our very spirituality as Ongo people, to keep it strong. 
Because the day will come that our feet leave this world, just like our elders that are gone before us that give us these teachings. There, so many of them are gone home now. They told us that day would come. They always give that, and when they would give Gaskyanya words of encouragement at a ceremony or just visiting, the day will come. You'll look to your right, you'll look to your left. There's nobody there now. It's you. All of a sudden, it's your turn. But never ever forget the day is going to come when you have to leave too. So you have to make sure that those that are sitting beside you are also preparing, moving forward. Because we never know. We never know when we're going to take that last breath. That's that's our Creator's job to know. So we give encourage all the encouragement all the time to our young and also those that are less fortunate and didn't have an upbringing like that. It doesn't matter how old you are. Like it doesn't matter if you hear those words. I'm too old to learn nothing now. I can't remember nothing now. It's, why start now? There's always somebody that does it, or so and so is always doing this, or so. It it doesn't. That's the self doubt. That's that's the opposite of the ganiquio. Use the strength and use the guidance of those that come here before you, from our ancestors, and do your part to make sure that it stays here. As you learn, also give back. That's 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 where the cycle keeps alive. So that, that's what I would say today. That would be my words. Is that I'm putting my words on top of the teachings that I was given. And I hope that it moves forward. Swajago. Tuna gawa nagan hi. Yahweh. 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 Yahweh.